Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Nicole. I'm Caden. And I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo on the Tour YouTube channel. We are very glad you could join us. It is a preparation day, the day before Shabbat, so that means you should be preparing. And for those that are new to this channel and have not heard, uh, preparation day basically means tomorrow is the Shabbat, which is a day you are to rest, you are not to do any work, you are not to clean, you are not to cook. You are just supposed to rest and spend time with our Father who will dwell with Him and stay in His Word. So that means today you would be preparing your food. You'd be cooking everything for tomorrow. If you have crock pots, you'd prepare it. If you have a food you can store in the fridge that you eat for the next day, you would do that. And you would just get your house ready. You would get yourself prepared for Shabbat so that you are rested, your mind is ready, and that you are ready to spend time with our Father as He had wanted us to do. All right. Thanks, Gade. I appreciate that. Eli was a little shy on the intro. We had a little dead air there. I did my part. You did your part, but you didn't finish on. We're trying to do this like a radio show and have no dead air here. And so it's a lot of fun uh, hanging out with you guys. Thank you guys very much. Um, everybody out there for extending your, your family to us and our family to you. Um, huge grizzly bear hug from a bearded guy and then high fives from the non-bearded guys. Soft face guys. Oh, wait. There's two, two, one soft face guy. The other, the other ones have some bristles, but... Who, who's the soft face guy, Eli? Why are you looking confused? They have nothing there either. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they had it. They had it. They just, uh, it's there. It's all good. All right. So how you guys doing? What did you guys do yesterday? Uh, cleaning organization. Nothing much. Nothing exciting. Eli? Uh, organization. That's it? Uh, that sounds real boring. I did concrete work. Ah, uh, concrete work. That sounds exciting. I did something <laughs> interesting. How'd you do? What did you, what'd you do uh, for concrete work? I basically just mixed up some uh, filtered sand. So you just take a shaker uh, with a little mesh and you shake out all the rocks. You mix it in with the concrete. Because uh, where we're at, we don't have a thing called quickrete like you do in the States. You actually have to mix it yourself. We don't have a thing called floors either. So we have concrete floors and this is the problem. So And then the floors uh, will, over time, they will uh, start kind of grinding away a little bit. So you got to fix it up a little bit. You got to throw some cement on it, relevel it, smooth it out. Because the so boys shuffle their feet. That's why it happens like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jade's pointing to Eli. Everybody everybody needs to pick up their feet when they walk. All right, everybody. Anyone have anything else on this? Let us get into today's lesson. And uh, everybody's sleeping. Sorry, I didn't have a split screen. All right, handy dandy split screen. And we are, are we in numbers 10? That was number 11. Uh, who set this up? Uh, uh, all right, somebody didn't set this up. You up. Eli, who goes under the Jayden. bus today? Jaden. Jaden goes under the bus. Bus ride. All right. This one's titled uh, "Fire from the Lord." It's Numbers eleven. Oh, before we get into this, I, I need to we need to go back into the the, the verse before the, the chapter before this to the fifth. It's the fifth one, wasn't it? Ten. Ten. It was ten. 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 Didn't we? Ten. Go over we we did go over that yesterday, and your mom and we. Here's the gig. Okay, here's something you guys probably did not know. We don't have a commandment for blowing the shofar. There's no such thing. There's not one in there. There's not there's not such a thing. So I guess how do we figure out we need to start blowing shofars? He says on the new moons you blow your Psalms A two. Psalms A two. So that's one thing we didn't find is we were like, well, we, we, there's a Torah command right here. And so we don't actually have a Torah command that says you shall do it. But it, it has been precedent that they do do it. Well we have it on the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets, right? Oh, and you have it on all your feasts as well. You're supposed to do it yep. on your feasts as well. And, and so, man, that is a command. Yeah, so we need to go back into this, and it says, let's, let's read this again. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your sending smoke offerings, and over your sacrifices of your peace offerings, that, you may, that they may be to you for a memorial before Yah Elohim. I am Yahuwah Elohim. Okay. Um... I, I, we got to revisit this. I mean, it says at the beginning, it, it says that in the solemn days, in the beginnings of your month, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your ascending smoke offering. It still says, <laughs> nothing changed from yesterday. But it has commas. Your solemn days. Karma, comma, right. The beginnings of the month. Because you wouldn't, you wouldn't run it on as a no, sentence. No, but if you took I mean, out the rest, days, if you took out this piece that says ye ascending smoke offerings... Yeah, why don't you just hit the back? I tried to, but I actually can't. Okay, so what, um, we got to figure this out. So, See in a, in what's the say in the king? Let's read in the king. It's almost like the, the sefer. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in your beginnings of your months, 
ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over your sacrifices. You see, it, it, the, it's over your sacrifices. I think if you... I, I know we can take stuff out of context and we can be free of the law too. Paul said so. But... Um, Look in the NIV. It has dashes, so it's telling you... Okay, let's read this in the NIV. Also at your times of rejoicing, your appointed festivals, and your new moon feasts. Okay, I mean, I like the dashes better, if that's what we want to go with. You are to sound the trumpet over your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, and they will be for memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord your God. So it, it doesn't say shofar. Would we, would we take this command and would we put a shofar in here? Because this is a trumpet. I, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, are you looking up in the Septuagint? All right. Yeah. As you look up in the Septuagint, um, I don't know. I don't want to miss these commands. But, I mean, essentially, we would need to get a silver trumpet if we want to keep his command. And we wouldn't be able to do it over sacrifices or anything of that nature. So, um, new moon feast. It says a new moon feast here. Do we have a feast on the new moon? Is this is a new moon a feast day? Um. I remember, like, uh, in Kings, David couldn't attend to, like, the new moon thing because Saul wanted to, like, kill him. Right. So that was that a new moon that, feast? That was a new moon feast. Hmm. So we do have precedent um, in, further in scriptures here. So um, I, I don't know. Maybe we actually need to add this in as a new commandment. But, I mean, I don't know how exactly we would need to get a... a I, we wouldn't be able to do anything over sacrifices or anything of the sort. Um, what do you see in the Septuagint, Miss Nicole? It says, And in the days of your gladness, and in your feasts, and in your new moons, ye shall offer with the sound of trumpets at your whole burnt offerings, and at your sacrifice of your peace offerings, and there shall be a memorial for you before your Yahuwah. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. It says Yahuwah in there. No, it says God. Oh. Oh. oh, okay. Um, boy, I am not, I am not, I, I just, does anyone have anything on this? No, I'm not really convinced. I mean, it says trumpets, and I don't, I don't know. Like, so, I, think, I think there's a feast for how these do we days. Get, how do we figure out we need to blow the shofar? I mean, how, where's no, if there's no command blowing the shofar in the Torah, um, I feel, I feel like I'm missing something, or we're missing something. I think it's just like what everyone does. I think it's kind of more like, Everyone else did it, so maybe we did it. So if you wanted to add this as a command, your requirements would be a silver trumpet, and you, I guess you would just, uh, on your new moon feast, you would, you would blow it. And I mean, your feast is, I guess, Messiah Yahushua is going to be the sacrifice. Um, are, we, are we doing this wrong? Anyone have anything? I, I don't know if we need to get a trumpet. We need to start like, blowing it on the new moons and the feast instead of the shofar. Yeah, and I mean that's that's interesting. I mean, I just I just don't know what to do. We're all looking here, so we're all kind of swayed here. Um, all right, so this is what I think we should do. I think we should add this as a commandment, a maybe commandment. I think we should add it in there, and then maybe when we can get maybe emissary of Elohim to weigh in or somebody else, um, we can figure this out. Because I'm not, I don't want to leave this with uh, questions because that'll haunt me and I won't sleep at night. So, um, let's add this as a new commandment. Um, and then we will probably remove it as a commandment if we can't find it better. So, anyone, anyone agree? Anyone disagree? Uh, yeah, we can add it for a command to blow it on the feast and the, uh, the new moons. But... We had the whole trumpet thing. I don't know because I, I, mean, I they use shofar right maybe before we, they use trumpets. So this is like an actual, this isn't like a translation error where he's just no. Like, the, I mean, this thing's a trumpet. They talked about them beating this out of silver, right? So right, but this isn't like hammer. a translation error where uh, it's just like trumpet, right? It's like Dude, they, it's didn't, actual, they didn't make shofars out of silver. I know, but like it's not a translation error where instead of trumpet they act, or instead of shofar they actually put trumpet instead. The that's, entire chapter is about trumpets. The silver trumpets is what is labeled in the NIV. Right, and it says make two trumpets of hammered silver. I mean, you would be sitting there firing this thing up in the in the. You'd be sitting there like a an ironsmith or something would be uh, doing this. So it says and use them for calling to the community together. I'm almost leaning like this is not, but I don't want to miss this because I don't know. 
Um, and again, we didn't get anybody out there that commented on yesterday's. So I, I know this is one of these hard, hard things to do. So um, anyone has the Ruhawk that is leading you guys to comment on this, please help us out um, or give us some more backgrounds on this. And I guess let's continue on. So Nicole, will you add this then, please? Yeah. And I'm just looking at further like other books like Jubilees and Jasher and stuff. Mm hmm. And they talk about blowing those shofars like when they go to, to wars and stuff and about bringing the camps together. Right. But that's what they said they were doing with the trumpets. Well, this, remember, on this, this is to get people lined up. First of all, this right. is this is a, a, a call to assembly. It's going to be different than a ram's horn shofar. A, a trumpet is going to sound way different. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely shofars. I mean, without a shadow of a doubt. All right, let's get in there. I am confused. May the Ruha Kakadesh explain this to us. Maybe we can have clarity to this because, yeah, your people are a bit confused. All right, Numbers 11. And when the people complained, uh-oh, it displeased Yahuwah and Yahuwah heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of Yahuwah burnt amongst them and consumed them that were in the uttermost part of parts of the camp. Okay, so that's very interesting, boys. Um, it says when people complain. How is that? Uh, how is that different today than it was back in the day? Well, Do you well, think Yah's hearing you? Is is he hearing us today? Yeah, but what were they complaining about? Was it the food? Because I mean, we hear the food was that they want to go back to Egypt. It tells you what. But it, yeah, but here's the here's the line. Before we even figure that out, is there a reason to complain? No. no. Is there a reason to complain in this house? No. Mm. Ever. No. We shouldn't. The Yah has completely taken care of this house. He has like a completely sent manna from heaven, has saved us in a hundred thousand different ways. Uh, we would not be eating a single bite of food if it wasn't for the the power of our creator that has sustained this family. I, I mean, it, I can't even go through the blessings that we have. And so, you know, this is something we should we should understand is when we are complaining and bickering and moaning, even even amongst ourselves, do you think Yah's going to want to dwell with that? Probably not. What, what happens to my blood pressure when you guys are bickering? It goes up. Yeah, it goes way up. When I just, I, literally, I said I'm, I'm getting so t so um, tuned into my blood pressure that when, uh, literally, if, if, if people are sitting there complaining or the kids are, like, having an argument, my blood pressure, without me even involved in this conversation, my blood pressure goes through the roof, and it keeps going up. And so I, I test my blood sugar, that, or my blood pressure so much that I know that, so... What do you think Yah's blood pressure does when, when the people that have been given everything, including the Yisraelites there, us, you, everybody out there, if you guys are listening to this, you're alive another day. Our creator has sustained your life that you may listen to his message and you may serve him, right? What do, what, does he owe us any of this, guys? No. Anything. No, he owes nothing. He owes us nothing. Absolutely nothing. But yet we've been given everything, including life, especially life, Right. Every breath of air that you guys breathe in is by because the Creator has done that, right? So let's you know let's let's look deep in ourselves as we read this, and let's let's critique ourselves as well. Verse two, and the people cried unto Moshe, and when Moshe prayed unto El Yahuwah, the fire was quenched, and he called the name of the place Tavra, because the fire of Yahuwah burnt among them. All right, now let's take let's. What do you think the fire was? What do you think this was? Was he literally just burning them? Well, that sounds like it. Is. I think he was just like. Lit what, a fire what about rashes on your skin and burning them? I mean, was it? Would, could it be like your skin felt like it was on no, fire? I think or was he literally burning them? I think it's literally fire. Huh. And it says in the NIV that tabra means burning. Burning, yeah. Well, I mean, your flesh could be burning too. You might have a series. Yeah, but these guys were all. So they were consumed, like they like got eaten really? by the fire. Did it say they're consumed? No, it did. Them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Yeah. All right. So it consumed them. All right, um, four. And the mixed multitude was among them. Fell a, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Yashrael also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? All right, what does that mean? Okay, the rabble. Meat, meat. NIV says the rabble with them began to crave other food. Okay, mixed multitude. What is this saying? This is like the... Uh... These are the these were the people that were not Yashrael. Mm -hmm. These were all of the uh, slaves, the people that were amongst them. And so they were uh, they were all upset. Why were they upset? So they didn't have meat. They were eating like bread or something. Yeah, manna. Manna from heaven every day. Okay. We remember the fish, which we did eat in Mitzrayim freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. 
All right, you guys all have leeks. Anyone mm-hmm. know what leeks are? Yeah, it's like an it's like a green onion. It is. Yeah. How do you know this? Uh, because it's a vegetable. You know this? Yeah. You know this? Yeah. So, I didn't even know we. I've never heard of that. You guys? Yeah, I've heard, I've of, heard of it before, but I, heard I never know. I've heard of a leek once, and I don't know. What it I is. heard of a leek before, but they're, we had to seal it on a roof. They're smaller green onions. <laughs> All right. Uh, walk, 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 walk. Okay, six. But now our soul is dried away, and there is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Appetite and uh, ivy. We have lost our appetite. I bet they didn't lose their appetite. I bet they're just tired of eating the same stuff. Now, what do we have in place of lentils in this house? Or oh, I, I screwed up. We have lentils instead of manna. Yeah, so we, uh, long, long ago, I guess we got a super good sale on lentils, and I, we stocked up. And I didn't realize how many we had up until the other day. But the boys, the first rule of Food Fight Club when we're starving is what? Eat the lentils. Lentils, 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 lentils. Reheat the lentils. All right, the second rule of Food Fight Club? Lentils. Yeah, cook some more lentils. And um, they are kind of boring, but a little bit of salt goes a long ways. So how many bowls of lentils do you guys think you've eaten so far? What? Are you tired of them? No, not really. They're pretty good, so no. Uh, no, no problems yet? I mean, these people ate them, though, for like a long time. So I guess... Only this year, too. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, can you, how long can you guys survive on lentils? Long time. Well, yeah, we're going to have to because there's no, no other food. We're <laughs> It's famine. It's feast or famine around here, and it's famine time. All right. Here we go. Um, but now our soul is dried away, and there's nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of bedellium. All right, what is that? Mine said the appearance of bedellium. I don't know what Mine it is. Mine didn't look like resin. I don't even know what resin is. It's like, uh, resin is, uh, I think, a, like the... Uh, there's everything has resin. Everything that leaves a mark is resin. Mine says perhaps a precious stone. Perhaps a precious stone. So the manna was a coriander seed. What color is it, coriander seed? Brown. Brown. So the manna was brown, and the color thereof is the color of bedellium. So is it brown and red then or something? Is that what we're looking? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Thanks, for, thanks for the input, everybody. I don't know what bedellium is. I don't know, I don't know man. Either. What is this bedellium? I think it sounds like a, it sounds like a soap. It sounds like a know. flower or something. I don't know. Either like a... Jam or something? I don't know. Oh, yeah, it could be. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it and taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. Wow. So that's another big thing is, is we don't have a lot of oil in the house. And so this is if they if it tastes like fresh oil. Eli got us a picture. What is it? It's bedellium. That's bedellium. It's, it's, like, it's a rock. It's like a light brownish. Yeah, it's Amber. a brown. So this stuff was brown. So their, their wheat came down or their manna came down as that. And I mean, it sounds like a lot like um, wheat that you would just grind up and it turns into a flower. What do you got, Nicole? I was reading your fresh oil because mine says baked with oil, and it tasted like cakes baked with fresh oil. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. I I mean, (laughs) you know, when stuff has oil and doesn't, I mean, it's definitely. And I guess uh, we probably shouldn't be drinking fresh oil. It's the taste of fresh oil that can't be good. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Anyone have anything else? No, mine says baked with oil. Baked with oil. Okay, so yeah, it's probably yeah, baked with oil. more sense. But okay, so here's the thing: you have manna, and you're able to grind it. You're able to beat it into mortar. What is that? Is that this after you ground it? Yeah. You ground it, and then you beat it into mortar like a, a, like a dough. dough, and they bake it in pans, and they make cakes of it. All right. So I mean, this stuff's awesome. It came from the sky. All right. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. All right, that's interesting. Why would the why would the manna wouldn't the manna be wet? I mean, it's like cake, okay. rice cakes. Right. What happens if you're out there in the manna storm and the manna starts clubbing you? How much manna comes down at a time, or did it just appear? Well, if it's there? like the angels, they just go by and drop it at night. Maybe that's quite a bit of manna. But yeah, who would who would be out there to see it? How would the manna come? Did it fly down? No, no I'm sure I'm sure there's little kids down the window like watching the manna there. Somebody had to watch for the manna to come. Yeah. All right. 10. Then Moshe heard the people weep throughout their families. Every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of Yahoo was greatly kindled. Moshe was also also was displeased. So the men were weeping. Bait us! Stop weeping, men. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't be weeping. Oh no, we have food. Beta male. Not an alpha. Food. Not an alpha. Alright, yeah. Don't, just don't cry. You have food, friends. Alright, so Nicole is getting me something. I don't know what it is. She's getting me a bag this of is something. This coriander seed. Oh. Uh, it looks just like itty bitty tiny peas. Just like little seeds. Yeah, itty bitty tiny like tiny peas. And mm. so they had a whole bunch of that that they ground up, so it came just like that. So even so it if came it, and see you get. So like, even if it got wet, it would probably be okay. 
but it's only for that one day, so it wouldn't really matter if it's wet anyway, because you'd have to get it. Well, if you ground it, it would be wet. That'd be something different, though. It'd be terrible. <laughs> yeah, it'd be. It wouldn't be so good. You wouldn't grind it real well. But I don't think they grind it how we grind it. I think they probably put it in bowls. Pedestal. Yeah, a little, little. Pedestal. Yep. All right. All right. So don't be a beta male and, and cry when you're getting manna. All right. Eleven. And Moshe said unto El Yahuwah, Wherefore have you afflicted your servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people upon me? So Moshe's sitting there and all of a sudden the beta males of this tribe are all you out there entire, crying. You hear an entire group of people just like the loudest bawling you've ever heard. So if the, if the men heard. were crying, that means the women were sitting. Dude, what kind of man sits there and bawls in front of his family? Like that. I mean, I get it. I get it. There's time for tears. I get it. I've cried in front of the family. Not a big deal. Dogs dying. Cows dying. But he's you like guys crying over food. He's like sitting there like, oh. Not crying over food. He's crying over the, t the what they want, right? Like, oh, we don't have meat. We have bread that's freshly cooked. Oh, no. Yeah. Come on. These guys. Oh, uh, man. Well, remember that. You guys all remember that. As, you, as the years go on and the lentils continue on, don't forget what you guys said. Okay. <clears throat> Twelve. Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that you should say unto me, carry them in your bosom as a nursing father bears the sucking child unto the land which you swore unto their fathers? <laughs> now Moshe is getting upset. He's like, I didn't birth these things. These are not my children that I need to take care of. I don't need to hold their hand through everything. He's like, yeah, I was like, all right, watch out. I'll kill them all and we'll rise up a, a nation out of you, Moshe. He's like, uh, calm down. Yeah, slow down, slow down. All right, whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Hey, that's I'm, so weird, the whole flesh translation. It just says meat to eat. Meat. meat. Yeah, flesh of the animals. 14. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if you, thus, if you deal thus with me, kill me. I pray you out of hand. If I have found favor in your sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. You thought uh, you thought the Torah was a burden. Moses has got the burden. He's got to deal with like a m million weeping people. Well, it's not just they're weeping. These people are violent, right? They want to pick up sticks and beat up Aaron the first time, right? So, I mean, you have, uh, what, you have a million people here that are sitting there crying from their tents? How many people are crying? And he's like, please make him stop. Dude, hopefully Yahuda wasn't in the tents bawling. You know, that's the leaders <laughs> of the thing. You got one day you're out slaughtering people. One day you're crying at the tent doors. I don't know. All right. And Yahuda said unto Moshe, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Yashrael, who you know to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the assembly, that they may stand there with you. Hopefully, and make sure they weren't the ones crying at their tent doors. And I will come down and talk with you there. And I will take of the Ruach, which is upon you, and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you bear it not yourself alone. <laughs> so that's a huge thing, right? Moshe, Moshe, he didn't exactly get demoted, but he got... Um, they split up the... Uh, yeah, they split the, the sadness. The sadness. The counselors. He got here, them like here. mental health counselors. Misery loves coming. Come join me, boys. Yeah. And say you unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of Yahuwah, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Mitzrayim before Yahuwah will give you flesh, and you shall eat it. Ugh, going down the wrong road. You shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month, until it come out your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, because ye have despised Yahuwah, which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Mitzrayim? He's All right. There's a lot of there's a lot of things here, and I mean I, I a lot of people won't understand this, but we were we had an exodus out of Babylon. We 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 were we literally left everything we had, put it in two cars, and drove 19 days to get where we are today. We had never seen this place. We had never visited this place. We had never. We didn't even know. We didn't even know anything about this place. All we knew that it was a long ways outside of Babylon. And Jeremiah 50 and 51 says, "If you do not want to share in her plagues, leave." And that was enough for us. We're like, okay. I mean, we nearly died several times on the trek down, but our creator literally saved us and we would not be eating. We would not be talking to you guys today if it wasn't for miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. It never ends. And our creator will, I don't, I, we do not deserve what our creator has given to us by any, any stretch of the, of the means. So I don't know why he loves his family, but we definitely love him. And, and uh, you know, we do this because we owe him everything. All right. Um, 21, and Moshe said, the people among whom I am am 600,000 footmen 
and you have said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. <laughs> Mine says besides all the women and children. So that was only men only. Yeah, that was 600,000 people. And Moshe goes, whoa, hold on. You're gonna, you want me to tell them they'll have flesh for a month? What? You, what? All right. So he, Moshe, was, Moshe got the, he's getting the point. All right. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? <laughs> I don't think Moses knew how big the world was or something. He's like, I gotta get all the fish together for this. Dude, <laughs> it's a million people. If you that that would be two million fish a day. If you wanted it like a little fish, if the fish were big. I mean, if we're talking like big fish, yeah. But if you're talking like a, a salmon or something, I mean, that's that's only one meal. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Moshe. Like, uh, cut, dude, you want two meals? You have a million people. Gotta cut we're talking that shark. four million fish in one day. You're gonna have to cut that shark. <laughs> four million fish in one day, man. That is that's what he's looking at. He's freaking out, and I see why. Okay, and Yahuwah said unto Moshe, "Is Yahuwah's hand waxed short?" You shall see now whether my word shall come to pass unto you or not. And Moshe went out and told the people the words of Yahuwah, and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And Yahuwah came down in a cloud and spoke unto him and took of the Ruach that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the Ruach rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. So hopefully these guys weren't the beta standing at the door crying. Hopefully they were not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just seems like a real beta move. All right, but there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. Medad, and the Ruach rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out of, unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. All right, so what what did we just read here? So out of the seventy, only two actually became selected. Okay, selected for what? To go out and prophesy. It said they all started prophesying, didn't they? They did, and then they They prophesied they and did not cease. But then? But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other, Medad. Medad and Eldad. And the Ruach rested upon them, and they were of them that were written. What written? So mine says... Listed. Then they did, then they did so no more. So they prophesied, and then they stopped. But two had remained in the camp. And there was two that were selected and listed. Is that the first prophets of the days? I mean, is that where the prophecies come in at? All right. Do they prophesy? Okay. So anyway, I don't know. And there ran a young man and told Moshe and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Yahushua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moshe, one of his young men answered and said, My Adonai, Moshe, forbid them. And Moshe said unto him, Envy you for my sake? Would to Elohim that all Yahuwah's people were prophets and that Yahuwah would put his Ruach upon them? Amazing. And Moshe got him into the camp, he and the elders of Yashrael. All right, I don't understand who got who. Moshe went back into the camp, he and the elders of Yashrael. So they were outside the camp. Okay. They were in the tent. Okay. Outside the camp. So they all got the Ruach, and then they they all stopped the Ruach. All right. All right. And there went forth a wind from Yahuwah, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on the side. And as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Wow. This is about three feet or 90 centimeters. Three feet high of quails upon the face of the earth. <laughs> that, should suffice. that should be enough. Dude, that was huge. Yeah, there's got to be millions of those things. Three feet high. Wow, no wonder he wasn't messing around. He Imagine was, people from other countries like looking over their heads and seeing like, quails of that. carrying meat. They're like, oh, my goodness. Wow, and they were probably all still alive because the people had to go kill them. Mm -hmm. And so, wow. All right, uh, 32. And the people stood up all that day and all that night and all that next day and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered 10 homers and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. All right, what's 10 homers? One's homers too. Dude, 1.6 metric tons. One and three quarters tons. One dude, dude, they don't wonder they had, dude, they all got greedy. That's why, that's why wow. y'all has it coming out their mouth or their nose. He's like, you guys want to, you guys want some meat? Here's one ton of, that's like 2,000 pounds of meat. Dude, those quails, he must have been planning of those quails and had quails birthing like that forever. And then you're now. Release them. Release the quails. All right. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of Yahoo was kindled against the people. And Yahuwah smote the people with a very great plague. Okay, um, this goes, you know, this goes to something about complaining, right? 
when you guys want to complain, I guess this is a lesson. This is a, this is a big family lesson for today. When we complain, there could be bad things. We might get what we're complaining for, but it might come with a curse as well because we have, number one, we have taken the, the, our faith and we have said that, uh, you know, we're complaining, right? Why would we complain when Yah has given us everything? And again, that goes for everybody out there. And here, here it is. And these are the lessons of our forefathers. These are, these are very well people that are, you know, generationally our people um, at some level. And they, uh, they got owned. So 34. And he called the name of that place Kivrat Hat, Hat Ta'ava. Anyone, what does that say in yours? Hatava. Why is it Kirath Ta Tawa? Okay. Um, it means graves of craving. <laughs> okay. Um, 35. And the people journeyed from Kivrot Hatsta Azava unto Katsaroth and abode at Katsaroth with 1.6 tons of. Dude, that's a lot of. That's tons I, per person. That's per person. Yeah. That was, that was and like it, if they didn't the eat that, it would go know. rotten. Here's the gig it would go rotten. Right, so they had no refrigerators. They had no way to keep the stuff cold. So if they all, they all went out there. They had so much meat. There was nothing they could do. No wonder, like it probably starts stinking as well. Mine says that they had them around the camp to cure by drying. So they were trying to dry it out, like make jerky <laughs> out of it. Yep. So they had death all over the place. So you look out there, and, and all their meat instead of them instead of them having nothing, now all around them is dead. Death smells, and of course that smell, you know. So now they got what they wanted, um, but did they? I guess that was the question. Did they get what they really wanted? Yeah, yeah, they didn't wait on this one. They weren't winning. Yeah, I guess, I guess a good verse is, is we need to wait upon our creator. And he will renew our strength. He will He will give us the strength of eagles and we will be able to rise up and defeat what is out there. All right, gentlemen, do you have anything else out there? Um, Jane, you're a little quiet over there. Got anything, buddy? Uh, have a great preparation day. Um, tomorrow is Shabbat, so definitely celebrate Shabbat. Yep. Eli, what you got? Don't complain. Don't complain. Yeah, that's a, that's a big thing. And I mean, we need to take all these lessons, not just all of us as a, as a family of Yah, but as a family here, we need to take these lessons and we need to um, do better than the people before us. And um, look, if he delivered quail to those people out there, he delivered manna out there, he can deliver manna to you. He can deliver quails to us. He can do all this, right? It's all about the faith. Do we have faith in our creator? Can you look around at creation and know that because of creation, there has to be a creator, that everything in creation is absolutely perfect. There's nothing out of whack. There's nothing out of place. But yet we need to give everything that we have, including our faith, including our minds, including our souls. We need to give everything to Yah and we need to not complain. We need to not stop bickering. We need to stop acting like the beta male standing at the doors of the camp. All right? Why does everyone keep looking at mom? I'm not. <laughs> Mom's, mom, I call mom the pillar of weakness. Whenever dad gets going at the kids, the kids always look over to see what kind of look mom has to see if she's approving of dad's lecture or not or what her thoughts are. Because mom's the gentle one in the house. Yes. <laughs> and I, actually, I'm the gentle one, and she's she's the angry one. You're wrong. Oh, maybe it's totally opposite. Okay. Um, gentlemen, thank you guys very much. Everybody out there, family, much love to you guys. Um, it's, a, it's a preparation day. We will see you guys hopefully for a live one on Shabbat. If it's not raining, if it's raining, then we will premiere it like we... Always do, but we will t uh, do Leviticus, our numbers at 12 tomorrow. And yeah, huge, huge hug from everyone here at this family um, to you guys, and we will call it a day. Enjoy right. cooking. Yeah, right. enjoy Shabbat cooking. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.